Let's do a little review. So this is Animal Crossing. And it was originally released on the N64 as uh, Animal Forest. And it didn't get an American release until the GameCube. And it was renamed Animal Crossing. Um, but unfortunately, like, uh, in terms of graphics, they didn't really make any improvements whatsoever. So it still looks like an N64 game. So that's why it looks the way it does. But uh, before I get into the graphics, I want to talk about uh, the game itself. Um, and what I thought of it. So, I played this game really late. Um, like now. It's 2019, this game came out in the N64 era. So it's been a long, long time. Um, so, that's just to give context to why I feel the way I do about this game. But this game was genre-defining. Um... There weren't a whole lot of games like this at the time. Pretty much the closest thing to it was Harvest Moon. Um, and its similarities are mostly just in, like, you know, resource gathering to accomplish goals. I think, like, that's the simplest way of putting it. And since this game, there have been a lot of games like it where you gather resources and to accomplish goals. Uh, Stardew Valley is one of the best, and also um, Don't Starve Together. Those are the, the two major games that I've played. And there have been a lot of other developments too. So because of that, um, this game is very dated. Um, there really isn't a lot to do. Um, so like, I guess you can boil it down to you need to get money to pay off your debts, and you need to fill up the the museum with stuff. And in fact, uh, the mechanic of, uh, of uh, gathering uh, fossils and things like that to put in the museum that inspired uh, the, the the mineral gathering and uh, the museum donation mechanic in Animal Crossing. So, like this game. Uh, in addition to Harvest Moon, inspired many of the mechanics we see in uh, Animal Crossing. Oh, excuse me, in uh, Stardew Valley. So, you, those are the, the two main components. You got a museum and you need to pay off your debts. And because it's it's just like two, two things, there really isn't a lot to motivate you to keep playing it compared to other stuff. At least by today's standards. Like back in the day, most of the people I've talked to, they told me that they played this game for hundreds of hours, maybe thousands of hours. And that's insane. You know, but I believe it because at the time, you know, all that stuff would have been so much more satisfying. But since then, uh, in other Animal Crossing games and other games as well, there are just, there's just so much more to do now. But they all play off of the same kind of um, uh, work reward mechanic, where you do work and then you're rewarded for it. And you know, it, it's it's so neat. You know, like you wouldn't think that you would be into something like that. Um, but it's oddly addictive. And this is this is one of the games that started it all. And it's, it's such a cute game. Uh, the music's great. That's one of the things I think that has aged the, the best. Is that, you know, the music really never gets old. And it's very cool. Like, and the music changes um, every so often. And that's always, like, a nice surprise to have. So, going back to... Um, the mechanic of, uh, you know, the, the gratification system. You know, here we've encountered Turnip Guy. You know, he sells you turnips for, you know, a certain price, and it works like the stock market. <laughs> you know, it's just like this one little mechanic, um, and I think didn't, didn't think too much of it, uh, but like, it when it paid off the way it did, 
just a little while ago. Um, it's so gratifying. You, know, you can buy like a hundred turnips from this guy and then turn that right back around and make a huge profit and pay off some of your debt in a short amount of time. And stuff like that really is so satisfying. And uh, this game has lots of instances where you get that gratifying feeling. So you get it with the turnip guy, uh, but you also get it by digging up, you know, you just see a little, like a little crack in the ground and then you dig it up and you find a fossil and then you get your mail, then you have to send it off and then you get your mail back and it's a new fossil and that's, that's fun and exciting that you discovered something new and then you, you go to the museum and then you get to admire all your work. That's one of the other cool things about this game, you know, just like Stardew Valley. You have something to show off, even if it's only meaningful to other st other Animal Crossing fans. You know, to anyone else, like they just wouldn't get it. It's like, okay, big deal. It's a bunch of dinosaur fossils, but like, you know, it's it's one of those things that like other fans they get it and they they could admire your work and your accomplishments. You can show off your museum here. You can also go back to your home and show off your digs and all the the cool decorations you made none of this actually contributes to you know the progression of the game per se it's not required for you know quote unquote beating it but you do it anyway because of that uh that reward cycle that i mentioned before that work reward cycle you get like all different kinds of insects here Apparently, uh, they added some more in the American release. So, um, one of the, the complaints I do have about the game, though, is, uh, you have a bunch of, uh, neighbors, right, that you can talk to, but you quickly realize that they're not very useful. Um, you can talk to them and they can give you jobs to do but they they usually don't give you a lot of money um, if they do give you money um, and the rewards they give you really aren't that satisfying at least for me maybe for other people it might be because they might give you like some cool clothes or something or maybe some cool item to put in your house but I wasn't too interested in that stuff I was mostly interested in making money and obviously, like, I get it, you know, they can't give you, like, a ton of money because it would break the game. Um, but s the tasks that they ask you to do are pretty lame. Like, you know, at best, they'll say, you know, like, you know, will you deliver this item for me to my friend? And that's about it. <laughs> you know, like, that, that's, that's usually the only job they have. You know, um, it is neat to, uh to see new new neighbors yeah see here you have you know he just want she just wants you to deliver an item to someone so you you'll see like new neighbors and it's kind of neat and besides just looking different they do have different personalities they all have like some kind of like catchphrase that they all have or some kind of unique personality so that's kind of neat um, other than that, though, I wasn't too crazy about the, the the neighbors. I don't really think they uh they have anything interesting to say. We'll talk to Sven in a little bit. <laughs> we'll come back. Um. So yeah, that's the neighbors. Um. So this game has like fishing. Uh, the fishing in this game's okay. Uh, you just... I don't I don't like it as much as, uh... Stardew Valley, but it's alright. It's, it's a lot... If you get good with it, you can do it pretty quickly and catch a lot of fish. And then you can donate them to the museum, and you can check it all out in your aquarium. So that's kind of neat. That's pretty rewarding and satisfying to do. Um, you get your basic tools. It doesn't overburden you with too many tools. So that's nice for, you know, the first game. 
doesn't make it overly complicated. Uh, the graphics, I think, are, you know, like, it, they look good, um, and I think they aged pretty well. I mean, it it is on the GameCube, and these are n obviously N64-style graphics. Um, but I think these graphics have aged better than a lot of other games on the N64. I was talking to Owly about it, and, um, you know, you got games like... Turok and stuff like that, which had a lot of pea soup fog. It tried to be overly ambitious, but it ended up not being very, very good visually. Whereas this game has very bright colors. Um, it's all big and bold. And I really love the, the way the animations here, you know, control is really silky smooth. And it just, it feels just right. And I like how the seasons change and you get a visual change to go along with it. You know, like, autumn looks really good, uh, spring looks really good. Summer looks a little bit too similar to spring, uh, but it's still good. Um, but yeah, it, um, the game can get a little, little boring, um, after a little while. Like, I can't see myself playing this for hundreds of hours. Um... Unlike, you know, let's say, Don't Starve or Stardew Valley. But that's only because it is an older game and it's dated. But this is, you know, those games owe it to this game for starting it all. And if it weren't for this game to establish all those mechanics, we wouldn't have those games. You know, so it's not about whether or not it aged well. It's about the history. And showing respect to your elders, <laughs> those who came before you, that uh, that laid the foundation for the gameplay mechanics that would be enhanced upon in future games. And I'm really glad I played this game to see where those inspirations came from. And that's all I gotta say.